Next up, we have a presentation from Roxanne, that's me. So hi there, everybody. <laughs> um, I'm going to be talking about um, dealing with the heats in the UX world. So as a UX designer, we are constantly in between the product owners, stakeholders, designers, etc. And it can sometimes feel like a fire or a heat that you're encountering. Um, so with this project, uh, with this uh, presentation, I'm going to talk about the project that I've worked on and how I've dealt with the heat and maybe it can be an inspiration or advice uh, for your project. Uh, so let's see. So first of all, this is me. Uh, I'm Roxanne Groenenberg. Most of you know me from Ladies at UX. Uh, I'm one of the organizers, um, but I also work at uh, Bakelit, which is a, a service design agency part of Capgemini. And what we do, we do a part of agency work and we do a part of consultancy work. And when you're a consultant, you are truly uh, at the client side working within their organization within their field uh, day to day. Uh, so that's uh, what I do. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the context. So the project that I'm going to talk about is for a client. It's a public organization. It can be juristical, health, medical, but I cannot talk about it. So I'm going to call them client X. Um, <laughs> that's how I'm going to refer to them. But so please keep in mind that it's a public organization and uh, their tensions and what they have, they had a, a work process and a system that wasn't aligned with each other. And they were working like that for years and years and years until one day a really, really negative event happened and they ended up in the newspapers. So everybody was looking at that organization and thinking, how the hell did that happen? So if you're smart, you can Google it, but I cannot say anything. Um, so what happened? They were all over in the newspapers and that was their cue. Like, okay, we really need to fix this because we have a bad reputation now and it's not good because we're a public or organization. Um, so we need to fix this. So they figured out that finally that the work process and the system weren't aligned and they needed to fix that. So they were busy for a year to fix the work process. Then the system still needed to fit the work process. So they said, okay, we need a UX designer. And then there was me. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, what, that's when I came in and that's when all the heats happened. So I'm going to tell you about that. The first one that I'm going to talk to you about is a low UX mature organization. So I'm not sure if any of you is aware with this model. This is the, yeah, anyone said yes? Great. <laughs> this is the UX uh, maturity model. If you don't know it yet, just Google it. It's from uh, Norman Nielsen and it shows you the different state, uh, stages that your organization can be in depending how mature your organization is. So if you're at the first stage, you're in a hostile uh, organization that doesn't really think UX is important and it can go all the way to stage eight where it's really a user-driven corporation. Usually the midpoint is uh, after stage four uh, <coughs> and that's when they decide, okay, UX is important. Um, so I'm going to be talking about the first four stages. Um, when I started the project, I thought, okay, they needed a UX designer, so they probably have a dedicated UX budget, otherwise they wouldn't hire me. I was wrong. <laughs> so <laughs> um, I came in there and I said, okay, this is my strategy, this is what we're going to do, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And they said, nah, you're just going to do your designs and that's all you need. So I immediately realized that I'm not in stage four, but I'm in straight three, which is the Skunk Works. And Skunk Works is kind of sniffing around, uh, doing a lot of uh, guerrilla usability testing, guerrilla user research, very small um, and very fast paced. There's nothing wrong with being in the Skunk Works, it's just that you don't have a dedicated budget and you don't have a lot of options to get more further results, but you can still get some great results doing the Skunk Works. So I was still satisfied, I think, okay, that's fine, uh, Skunk Works is okay. So I went there and I started working and did a lot of guerrilla uh, usability testing, a lot of guerrilla user research. I just designed, etc. a little bit of uh, sniffing around. And then uh, we finally had to implement it. So the problem was we used a very, very, very old technology and the developers were getting towards a lot of uh, challenges just trying to develop whatever was designed. So finally we went to stage two. <laughs> it became really developer-centered. So anything that was designed, um, we would discuss it, and then it said, oh, it looks nice, and then they would try to code it, and it just didn't work out. So they were 
doing it a little bit and it totally ended up looking different from what we were uh, designing. And one of the main reasons was that we also had a time frame uh, while we were working Scrum. So they said, okay, let's make sure that the functionality is there and then we can continue on designing it and making it uh, more towards the user needs. The problem was it never went that far. So we ended up in the hostile environment. We finally uh, were reaching the deadline because uh, it was already in the newspapers. Everybody was looking at this project and they said, hey, why the hell is it not delivered yet? And then they said, okay, we just need to pump out the functionality. Everything from the previous uh, application needs to be online. It needs to be live and UX, not important. Just pump out those designs, just develop it and that's it. So I ended up in the hostile environment, which really isn't the environment you want to be in. So um, I was thinking, okay, how can you actually deal with this? And the first thing that I thought was map out your uh, organization on this maturity map. Once you know where your organization is, you know what kind of challenges you have and how you can deal with those challenges. So for example, I thought we had a dedicated UX budget. We didn't have, and that was something that I should have foreseen if I already mapped them on the organization map. Secondly, show your work and process throughout the, uh, show your work and results throughout the whole process. So one thing that I did, I did a lot of uh, guerrilla usability testing or user research. And uh, what I did, I went all over the country to go to the users because they didn't come to me, I would go to them. And then I just drove around and just had a cup of coffee and said like, okay, can you check out this or can you do that? Problem is my team was still in, you know, the client side <laughs> and they didn't see anything of what I was doing. So even the product owner was like, yeah, sure that you said that the users think this, 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 but I haven't seen it. So one thing that I started doing was uh, organizing focus groups involving the product owner at the end of the results so that he can hear from the users saying like, no, we really do need this. Also invite the stakeholders, invite the developers and just show them, okay, this is what I've done. This is what's coming out of it. And lastly, if it's necessary, please put on the naughty shoes and just improvise. So one uh, example that I want to give you is for example, um, they finally said usability testing, not important. We'll just put it live, etc. But I needed my results because uh, the, the system that I was designing was very complex and I wasn't sure if I was going the right direction mm -hmm. and I wasn't sure if the system was usable enough for the end user. So I was like, how the hell did I get my uh, valid points and my end results? So what I did, um, they did say, we want to have a user acceptance test and a user acceptance test is basically a tester will write down a path and the user will just click through the whole path and then it says, okay, I accept this. So they were saying yes to a user acceptance test, but usability testing is a no-go. Then I thought, I will just go to the user acceptance tester. So I went there and I said, hey, uh, I want to tell you something about usability testing. Uh, can you look with me? And I just uh, made him very happy with what usability testing was. And I kind of just sneaked in my usability test in his scheduled time for acceptance test just to get my results. Uh, so it's kind of sneaky, it's kind of naughty, but it got me my results so I could continue on further. Second heat, <laughs> UX and Scrum. <laughs> yeah, I see a lot of people nodding here. <laughs> I already expected that this was a familiar one. Um, I have my hate-love relationship with UX and Scrum, especially within this project. Um, so what happened? Um, the Scrum guide, it doesn't acknowledge designers uh, at all. And there are many people who think that the Scrum guide is the holy grail. So we had a scrum master who said, okay, it doesn't acknowledge designers, so you should just develop, you should just test, you should just do backend development, <coughs> design, man, not important. So that was already my first heat. Uh, my second heat was we were getting uh, user stories that were entirely huge and they wanted to, us to do it in two weeks. So there wasn't really enough time to do the design, development, testing, everything within that sprint. Um, so what we had was the developers were waiting for me to shake out those designs within a day and then the rest of the two weeks I would just be staring. So what we finally did, uh, the designers started to work ahead and then um, make sure that the user stories were refined and ready. 
and make sure that there was a concept design laying there. And one of the things that we did during the refinement is then show it to the developers and then collaborate it further on is this now what you really wanted or is this even impl implementable? So yeah, that's my advice. Use the Scrum Guide as a framework. Please don't use it as a holy grail. It's really not uh, <laughs> the holy grail. Another one uh, of my heats that I've noticed is um, the management unclear vision. So what I said before, as a UX designer, you're in between a lot of heats. So also I was in between a lot of heats. Uh, we didn't have a product owner for, I think, maybe three months. There was no product owner at all. There was so many stakeholders saying, it should be this. And then the other stakeholders said, we should be that. And this, that, this, that. So the design just tweaked around and everything just tweaked around. We didn't know what the business really wanted because we were missing the product owner. We had a manager who said, um, UX, yeah, I want to have it. Then a week later, no, it's too much money. You're getting budgeted out. So that was also one thing that was really hard. And she didn't have a clear vision of what she really wanted. The users, I put them as a fire, but they were great. <laughs> but they can be a fire too, because uh, what they want can differ for what the manager wants. It can differ for what the product owner wants and what the stakeholders want. So as a UX designer, they basically all come to you. They all say, oh, I want this, 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 this. Why is it not going like that, 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 that? And it can feel intense. It can feel really, really intense. So what I want to say is make sure that you bridge a gap between them. Make sure that they are on common grounds and that they have one vision and one mission. And it can be hard, but it's possible. Just make sure that they are communicating with each other and that they know what the other person wants and what the needs are. So in the end, <laughs> it was, I started working, I did all the implementations, and it was ha happy ever after. I was very happy. No. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, um, it took a toll on me. It was two years of me working on that organization, two years every day, fighting, 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 fighting. I ended up nearly on a burnout. I decided I'm going to quit this assignment. This is really not, um, it's not good for my health if I continue on. Uh, so I stopped the assignment. It was very rapidly. And they deci even decided, oh, now that the UX is gone, that's fine. We have more money for something else. UX was totally out of the picture. Uh, I'm not sure where this project is going. Maybe we'll see them in the newspaper again. I don't know. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> but. Um, that's basically um, what happened. So what I want to tell you with this is a few lessons. The first one that I've learned from what happened with me, and I cannot stress this enough, always start with a design brief. I totally forgot to start with a design brief. I just immediately went on with the strategy, and I never really know what is actually the assignment, what do you actually want, how many stakeholders are there, uh, what, what's this unique selling point? What is, what is this excitement actually about? So if I would have filled in a design brief and I would really recommend, especially if you're in a public organization, write it down like a contract, make sure somebody signs it because they will say, no, I never said that they did. So always start with a design brief. Even if you're working in a company, uh, in house, if you get a new task, always tell them, okay, what do you really want with this? and continue on asking further, or if you work in an agency, just continue asking what they really want. Um, it's really important because when you fill in the design brief, you also know um, what's the UX maturity model, you know what are the challenges, and what kind of strategy best suits for this assignment. Secondly, know your opponent. So do not, do not only know uh, what does your product owner really want, what does your uh, scrum master really want, because they all have their different goals. They're not bad people, some are, but usually they're, <laughs> they're not bad people. They just have their own needs and their own vision. So if you know what they really want, you can know what you're fighting, fighting against. But also uh, know what kind of technology you're working on. So for example, I had this super old technology and if I knew before what the challenges are and what the limits are of the technology and what it's really capable of, I would have designed totally differently but also know your methodologies. So uh, is your organization agile? Is it really agile or are we really doing waterfall? And what are the good and bad points of waterfall? If you know that, you know what you're facing and it's 
kind of like a backpack that you have carrying around with information that you can use. Secondly, uh, uh, thirdly, <laughs> you cannot please everyone. That was one thing that I really learned. Um, as a UX designer, you're kind of with empathy and you really want to please everybody. Um, you cannot. So you will always have somebody against you who is not, uh, who's, who's not happy with what you're doing. Just make sure that everybody in your team is on a common ground. Uh, understand everybody, but don't be pleasing them. Sometimes you have to disappoint them in order what's best for the project. Another one is take care of yourself. Um, stress really is deadly. Um, you can really get health problems out of it. I got some health problems out of it. And just if you see the symptoms, immediately ring the bell, tell your manager, this is not something for me, and just get the hell out if it's really that bad. Because, I mean, it's a job and your life is way really more important. And lastly, it's really okay to fail. So especially, I'm a young designer too, I didn't do, uh, I'm not working for a very long time. So for me, it's really like, oh no, I screwed up again. And this was my, my portfolio uh, item. I was gonna be so famous with this and I could do, <laughs> could do talks, you know, I was really thinking that. But now I'm talking about my failure. So I'm still doing a talk and I learned so much from this one assignment. Even though I, I flat out fell on my face, I learned so much and I can take that with me in my next assignment. So that's one thing that I really want to tell everybody. It's okay to fail. It's part of your process. And just uh, dust yourself up and try again. That's it. So yeah, thank you. <laughs>